Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our backyard. It is the end of May, and so it is time for my May garden tour. And what I like to do is I like to stand on my patio and pan the backyard every time I do this monthly video so I can see how the garden is changing. And then I like to start in a diff different section. My name is Crystal and I garden south of Houston along the Texas Gulf Coast in zone 9B. And yesterday I did the garden tour of my north bed and shade garden and then the patio. And today I'd like to do our central garden bed that we just put in this year and the other beds that I consider full sun. So let me start with the newest one we put in, our central garden bed. Sorry about that. I had to take a detour. had a red-bellied woodpecker come and eat. So this is the newest garden bed that we put in. And we put this in last month in April. I've been very happy with the growth in our newest garden bed. And let me start on the side this is where I have our Salvia nemorosa, which is called Rose Marvel. The bees and smaller butterflies love this. I transplanted a little Joe pie weed back over here and want to see. I had that in a container, so I'm going to see how that does. My love and wishes Salvia back here from Australia is doing much better. It did not like being in the container for the number of months that it was until I, we got this bed going, but it is spreading out. And you can notice the growth, oh my goodness, on the dwarf red porter weed. That was truly a dwarf. It was only about to hear. And it's supposed to get one to two feet tall. So I hope it stays contained. We'll see. The jury is out because porterweed can get very large. But I love those narrow bloom spikes. The red bloom spikes. And then I have a yarrow. It's a shorter yarrow. And some native liatris. This has been blooming 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 it's getting towards the end of its blooming period and a native stokes aster that has started blooming and i love these blooms i also love that the butterflies <laughs> love this flower next to that i have cheyenne spirit coneflower and they have all different warm tones. And this one is going to be kind of a, maybe a burgundy color. We'll see, it's just starting to bloom. And I have a Hot Lips Salvia. Hot Lips is finally loving his life now that he's been in the ground for a month and a half and blooming gorgeously. And of course, you can't miss Tithonia. <laughs> Tithonia is an annual grown from seed. It is also called the Mexican sunflower and it is a humming, well not a hummingbird, it is a 
favorite, absolute favorite of butterflies. And yesterday I had five different butterflies, types of butterflies on this Tithonia. So I planted 10 plants, which is probably too much, all along this whole end of the garden. And it is, they've been in the ground ugh, five weeks. <laughs> and they have, they just love it here. It's in full sun. And it is too close to my embers wish, Salvia, because I'm going to have to put more stakes over here bamboo stakes because it's going to or move that plant because it's just overtaking the tithonia is just overtaking that but let me go to the back oops so the fun thing about this tithonia is you can look out and see butterflies on it at any time during the day you know, it's early this morning and I was surprised to see the butterflies flying. It's over 80 degrees, so I shouldn't be surprised. But it's early and they're out and about loving this Tithonia. And it's fun because it's out of all the flowers in the yard, right now, this flower is the one that's attracting these butterflies. It's a perfect landing pad. It's just the perfect type of flower for the butterfly. And behind it, I have got my five panel trellis of Cardinal Climber that's also been flowering. This pretty little red tubular shaped flower the larger butterflies but in particular the hummingbirds love this flower this is a cross between a red morning glory and a red cypress vine and it is grown from seed we grow it from seed every year and we harvest our seeds and behind it I planted canna lilies and these were bulbs I purchased from Walmart, not Walmart, from Costco, and I'm getting my first bloom spike. This is going to bloom red, and it was called the President. I am so excited to see this first bloom stalk. So hopefully that will open up soon and I'll be able to show you that color. So I backed out a little bit and the new garden bed has on this northern side the tithonia and then I've got the canna lilies and over here I have a beautiful trellised Mexican flame vine and it just went through a very large flush of flowers. There's a few left, not many. The one, I've, one thing I've noticed about this vine, this also is a butterfly favorite. They like landing on here and they just cover this really well. And the thing I noticed about the Mexican flame vine is it does need a little rest period or it will take a little rest period before it will flush out with blooms again. And then next to that I have another canna and this is the same canna lilies as what I just showed you and this one the leaves are getting eaten by a leaf roller caterpillar and so I'm just starting to get the flower here so the leaf rollers are starting to munch on this so the foliage isn't quite as pretty as the other but that's okay the blooms the blooms will be beautiful okay let me come out and then I have 
what I call my tree bed and my five panel trellis bed with passion vine and I'm going to go over there next. With the stop in between to take a look <laughs> at the butterfly on the Tithonia. That one happens to be a pipe vine swallowtail butterfly. Okay, on over here. So in this raised garden bed, I have low plants that flower in the spring, mid-sized, and then of course the trellised and beautiful passion vine. In particular, looking at this plant, and I fully expect this flame acanthus to start flowering soon. See these buds? They are getting ready to flower and it's usually the beginning of June. That's what it was last year. You can see all the buds along here. And this is both a humming, it's a native to Texas, Flame Acanthus, and it is a hummingbird and butterfly magnet. Both love this flower. It's also a host plant to the Texas Crescent butterfly, which is a small butterfly. So it's a host and a nectar plant. And what I like is I like having it more upright. This will, this plant will kind of sprawl. <laughs> and we come in, in here and we will stake it. You can see I've got some clear ties back here. We'll stake it up so it has more of an upright habit rather than laying over, which is its natural tendency. You can also trim it. It is, you can heavily trim this. Of course, I didn't want to yet because of all these blooms that are coming. And you can see it's just covered and it's gonna be blooming, blooming shortly. And then I have a butterfly bush. This is called Buzz Hot Raspberry. And this is a swallowtail favorite. They love butterfly bushes. And then my passion vine, one of them. This passion vine is a hybrid called Incense. And it loves it along this panel trellis. Let me move in the back. This trellis is so lush and it grows so well. And it just loves its life. And the Gulf Fritillaries, it's a host plant to the Gulf Fritillaries. And they are all over this plant. You can see I need to pull it back over here from my neighbor's fence. So let me go down to the end. So on this far end of the trellis, I have a container of a native passion vine called a cotton leaf passion vine. And this leaf is, is fuzzy. And so I guess hence the name huh, cotton leaf. But I have a female Gulf Fritillary that's laying eggs here on the passion vine this morning. I can have hundreds of caterpillars on this passion vine and because I have so many panels and so many trellises of it you can just it never it gets gets eaten down okay and then I have a container of hot lips I purchased two hot lips in the very very early spring one I put in a large container and the other one I put in the ground in our new in our new garden bed and this one got planted first so of course it is larger but both are blooming wonderfully this one has a little bit more variation what i'm seeing in the blooms so hot lips is a bicolor red and white bloom but i also can get just red and then just white 
And then of course, looking this way is all the flame acanthus that should start blooming. Oh, hopefully within a few days. When I come back in the corner and I look and I see red porter weed and then my tree bed and the salvia and then a volunteer passion vine. So let me go over to the tree bed. So in my tree bed, I have salvia amante, which I absolutely love, this pink salvia. And then over on that side, I have the purple Amistad and over here also. And then in between, I have Salvia Lucantha or Mexican Bush Sage. And I will get a flush of flowers in the spring from this. Not a large flush, but some. And then in the fall, this will, or late summer to fall, this will just be beautiful spikes. And my pipevine swallowtails love this flower. And there you can see the purple Amistad. And I have the passion vine. This was a, this was a passion vine that grew, um, came over and grew over here. And I thought, you know, I wonder if this will, I can keep this contained. And I don't think I'm going to keep it well contained. So I'm going to have to be trimming this back because I don't want this to take over. I don't want the passion vine to take over the bed. And then I have a gorgeous David Verity Kufia over here in a, in a, in a planter, in a container. And it loves its life here in full sun. And it just is a huge nectar producer and hummingbirds and butterflies and native bees love this Kufia. All right, let me come back. So in the front of this tree bed, I have a mounding lantana. This is from the Bloomify series. And it is, the color is called Rose. I have a Greg's Mist Flower that I have to keep in check because it would love to take over a garden bed. And it is a native. to Texas and it really draws in the queen butterflies and then on this end I have this mounding lantana which I absolutely love it's my favorite out of all the lantana the way this grows this bloomify series is a mounding habit and it's sterile and it is covered with pollinators this one is called red they come out a lighter color, yellow to orange, and then go into finish off in the red color. But as I was saying, that is my absolute favorite growing habit of Lantana. They love porterweed. Okay, so next I'm gonna take a look at my four by four raised bed. Isn't that a pretty butterfly? That is a pipe vine swallowtail. And you can tell by the blue and then the blue on the, the abdomen. Hopefully this will be blooming shortly, but this is a Texas native, it actually um, was discovered in San Antonio. And this is John Fanuc Phlox. It's a paniculata phlox. You can see, oh goody, it's going to start. And it has multiplied, which I love it. And this phlox blooms gorgeously, and it is a pollinator favorite. Behind it, I have a blue chiffon, Rose of Sharon that should start blooming oh, in another month or so. 
And then I like to have ground cover in here, which is ageratum. And this is a volunteer ageratum. And I almost pulled up these plants because I did not know what they were. And this is volunteer porterweed. Isn't that crazy? So I'm going to need to um, dig this up because I don't want this here, but I do want to keep the porterweed. So I should be getting some nice blooms in this garden bed shortly. All right, as I look into my south bed, and then of course my coral honeysuckle, and I've got containers of Turk's cap over there. Let me come over to what I call my south garden. So this, I do have a slightly raised garden in the front and the back, and I have drainage issues over here. So you will notice I do have more containers back here. But what I do have is I've got along the side gorgeous native coral honeysuckle trellised. I have a yellow sestrum plant that is just a tried and true plant that's a pollinator attractor. I never really talk about this much and it just is the tried and true plant for me. So when I look at my garden this way. I want to go in the back. And the Hamelia patens or firebush is coming along and growing nicely. I have two on the ends. That one in particular is a large leaf. And then I have a smaller leaf and it is starting to bloom a pollinator magnet that also creates berries that the birds and animals love. And then way in the back, I have a Cape Honeysuckle and this blooms orange in the winter and through the spring, really until you get a frost. And then it will die back to the ground with the frost, but it comes back gorgeously and I do leave some of the support structure of its prior um, stems. And the reason I do that is because I can tuck that back in because I really want that more trellised. And then the Hemilia patens out here, or the fire bush to just take over this bed. I'm gonna come over to the side. You can really see the difference in the leaf sizes. This also, this larger leaf also gets a very large, in comparison, berry, whereas this is a smaller berry. But this blooms more, there's way more blooms on it. So I like having the two. And then I did something, probably shouldn't have, but I brought back Mexican flame vine and I planted it in the ground because I just broke off a piece and it, and then put it in a little container and it is easy to propagate. And I thought, you know what? Let me see how it does back here. So I've been wanting this to grow on this bamboo stick and it wants to kind of meander. So we'll see, we'll see how that does back here. Okay, as I come this way and look out, I have a couple of large giant milkweed that I need to bring back that I they're out in the front and I haven't brought them back yet. And this has been an experiment for me. I had two containers of giant milkweed and the plants were beautiful, but I couldn't save them because they were too large. I couldn't save them during our freeze in January. And so you know, I thought, well, let's see what happens. And it has taken a long time. This is the end of May, but from the root, it is starting to come back. Look at that. Amazing. That's wonderful. I'm really, really pleased with that. I didn't 
know if that would happen. And then I have some Greg's Mist Flower. This is the plant that I got an extra one of and I just planted it back here and I planted a flame acanthus just to see how they would do. I have native Salvia Farinacea, both white blooms and purple blue blooms. This is a native that just grows and grows and grows and grows, takes whatever it gets thrown at it. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the little seedlings and plant them along this side. So we'll see how that goes. They self-seed fairly easily, but as you'll notice, I had containers over here and so there isn't a flush of flowers on this side. So I want to get more of this. I would love to have Salvia Farinacea all throughout my containers. And then I do have a Miss Molly butterfly bush. And the reason Miss Molly is in a container along with her relative, <laughs> the lo and behold blue chip, is because butterfly bushes do not like wet feet and with the drainage issues they need full sun and not wet feet and they're in containers and I've been able to be successful with putting my butterfly bushes so far into containers. I have a leggy blue porter weed that I haven't cut back. A vermillionaire kufia and some volunteer snapdragons in my container along with my beautiful plant that's coming back so nicely. This is called a Pride of Barbados and this will bloom really beautifully in the summer. So I don't see back here unless I come back here, but I also want this to be as native as I can or as adapted as I can to be a pollinator favorite. So for May, a synopsis for May would be everything is growing beautifully in the yard. Love it, love it, love it. I've got a container that I will be re replacing that I haven't replaced yet. Love this time of year because it's not too hot yet and it's just springing forth with life. So thank you for joining me today on my two-parter garden tour. I hope you were able to join me yesterday for part one, which was over here. And then part two is my sunny garden, full sun. Well, I hope you all have a wonderful day today. Thank you for joining me. And I hope to see you again soon.